Hello students, this is our 14th lecture. The title of the lecture is Sentence Elements. If we want to learn the sentence elements, we should study a sentence. Means, sentence elements are impossible without the definition of a sentence. It means that the sentence elements and the sentence are the integral part of the sentence and that's why we should study first the sentence means what is actually the sentence. So the sentence is a group of words. Group of words means some words come together and they make a sentence and these words come together and they make a sentence which gives us a complete meaning a complete meaning it means that the sentence has a complete meaning and this meaning is given to the sentence by the sentence elements by those words by those words the sentence sentence get the proper meaning or complete meaning or senseful meaning which are those elements which are those elements which help the sentence which create the sentence and make the sentence building strong we should see them which are the sentence elements so the first sentence element is a subject it means that if we want to make a sentence because without a sentence we cannot make two sentences and two sentences makes three sentences three sent sentences make four sentences and in this way there becomes a paragraph and paragraph and paragraph it becomes a page and pages and pages becomes a book so if we want to write a book then we should understand the elements of the sentence so the first element is a subject so what is a subject subject is a person person means what a man a woman Persons are active, persons are passive. Persons are, suppose, first person, second person, third person. So, in first person, what is there? In the first person, I, we, me, mine, like this, like that. So, the, in the first person, there are the uh, I, we, these two subjects come there. So these are the persons. Second person, you and you. If there is a boy, we can say him, you are a boy. If there is a girl, we say, you are a girl. So this is also the person and this is the second person. Third person, he, she, it. We say, he. Means we say, Sham, she, we say Radha, it, we say a book. So these are the persons and with the help of these persons, we create the sentences. Subject is also a place because a place, place means what? A name of the place. Suppose Bombay. Bombay is the capital of Maharashtra. We can say Bombay is the capital of Maharashtra. Delhi is the capital of India. We can say like this. So these are the names of the places. So place is also the subject of the sentence. Then thing. Thing means what? Now this is the watch. And this watch is the thing. And so this thing also is the subject of the of the sentence and all these subjects means the person the place 
and the thing. All these subjects perform the action of the sentence. Means all these subjects perform the action of the subject. Means they do the action in the subject. Because without their action, there is no sentence remember. Because a sentence demands a subject. And if the subject is there, that subject makes a particular action in the sentence and that's why the sentence is created. So we will see one sentence. For example, Mohan plays. Mohan plays. Now who plays? Who plays? Mohan plays. So Mohan is the subject because Mohan is doing here the action of playing. Suppose a game and that's why here Mohan is the subject. Next, the subject tells the purpose of the sentence. The subject tells the purpose of the sentence. Because uh, we know that the subject has a particular purpose, purpose, sorry, purpose. And without the purpose, there is no sentence. Because in everyday life, we use the sentences and those sentences are with the purposes. And without purpose, purposes, how possible it is that we will um, speak sentences or talk sentences? No, we cannot talk. And that's why the subject is in the sentence and that subject tells the purpose of the sentence. It means that, in other words, we can say that the subject talks about the sentence. What is the point? The subject talks about the subject. Means the total subject is there, but the total sentence is also there. And about that sentence, this subject talks. And that's why we can say the subject is important in the sentence. So what is our point? Our point is that the subject talks about the sentence. So here we will take one example and we will prove how this uh, subject talks about the sentence. So the sentence is Mohan plays cricket on the ground. Now see Mohan plays cricket on the ground. In this sentence this Mohan is, Mohan is talking about the total sentence. What is he talking? What is he talking? Mohan plays cricket on the ground. This thing is being talked by this Mohan. Means Mohan is showing all this sentence. Mohan is showing all this sentence. And that's why here we can say that the subject talks about the sentence or the subject talks about the sentence or speaks about the sentence or discuss, discusses about the sentence. The next point is that noun, pronoun, modifying words, phrases or clauses are the subjects of the sentence. What is the point? The point is very clear. How is clear? Noun is the subject. Noun, Sham, Mohan, Rajaram, Thomas, William Wordsworth, Shakespeare, these are the nouns. And these nouns become the subjects of the sentence. Pronoun. How are the pronouns? Suppose Shakespeare, he. Eh? Woman, she. So in this way, these are the pronouns. So nouns, pronouns and modifying words. Modifying words means what? Suppose there are the words, they modify or they give more uh, more information about the subject. Uh, and so these words are called the modifying words. And these modifying words are also the subject of the sentence. For example, we will say, we will say, this is my greatness. We will say, this is my greatness. Now, this is my greatness. 
सो दिस ग्रेटनेस इज द मॉडिफाइंग वर्ड दिस इज माय ग्रेटनेस दिस ग्रेटनेस इज अ मॉडिफाइंग वर्ड बट नाउ दिस वर्ड बिकम्स ए सब्जेक्ट हाउ सी ग्रेटनेस ग्रेटनेस इज इंपॉर्टंट इज सॉरी ग्रेटनेस इज इंपॉर्टंट इन लाइफ ग्रेटनेस इज इंपॉर्टंट इन लाइफ सो नाउ दिस ग्रेटनेस बिकेम द सब्जेक्ट सो इन दिस वे दिस मॉडिफाइंग वर्ड्स ऑल्सो बिकेम बिकम्स बिकम्स द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ द सेंटेंस फ्रेजिस 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 ऑल्सो बिकम द सब्जेक्ट सब्जेक्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल देर इज द इन्फिनेटिव फ्रेज वॉट आई एम टेलिंग इन्फिनेटिव फ्रेज सपोज टू गो सो धिस टू गो विल बिकम ए सब्जेक्ट हाउ सी टू गो टू बॉम्बे इज माई ड्यूटी टूडे टू गो टू बॉम्बे इज माई ड्यूटी टूडे वॉट इज माई ड्यूटी टूडे to go to bombay is my duty today so to go to bombay is here the subject and this subject is called the phrase or clauses what is called the clauses clauses means the conjunctions are there and these are conjunctions prepare the clauses conjunctions prepare the clauses for example what you want what you want this is the clause what you want what you want is expected by me what you want is expected by me so what you want is the subject that is the clause and is expected by me this is the sentence remaining sentence there is the verb and the remaining part of the sentence so uh, the clauses are also the subjects of the uh, sentence uh, we clear again the second element of the sentence is the verb the second element of the subject is the verb we are be verb what is verb the verb tells the action of the subject what is the verb the verb tells the action of the subject the what action is done by the subject is told by the verb means verb comes there only to tell the action of the subject means what is the subject doing what will the subject do in future all these things are shown by the verbs and so it is called that the verb tells the action of the subject for example we will see mohan plays cricket what is the action of mohan here plays play play means mohan is playing mohan plays mohan is playing mohan will play what will mohan do mohan will play what is mohan doing mohan is playing what does mohan do here mohan plays means mohan plays so this word plays is the verb and this verb verb is telling the uh, action of this mohan so it is very clear that the subject tells about the action of the subjects now the third element of the sentence is object sorry object what is meant by object what do you mean by object or what is the object the definition of the object is that object always comes on third number in every sentence grammatically if we see then we will understand or we can say that the object always comes on third number in every sentence but we can we can change that object here and there if we want to make that sentence stylish we can uh, handle here and there or we can change that object uh, at this place place or at that place why 
because now uh, we can make the language versatile and that's why uh, we can uh, change the place of that object but actually uh, the object comes on third number in the sentence object is the word object is the word on which a subject makes action the subject makes action for example i took a watch for example i took a watch so what i did i took a watch means on what i did the action i did the action on the watch means i took that watch and that's why this watch is the object because this i subject makes action or is making action on this watch and that's why this watch is the object there and what is the definition again uh, the the subject makes action on the object that is called the object uh, okay next for example we will see mohan plays cricket second example we have taken mohan plays cricket now mohan plays cricket means when mohan goes to the ground on which thing he makes action he makes action on the cricket cricket means what that game or that cricket bat Mean, means he takes that cricket bat then he goes on the gr ground and he starts his game so this mohan plays the cricket and he makes action on cricket that's why cricket is here the object now the objects are of two types the objects are of two types the first type is direct object the first type is the direct object so what is the direct ob object the direct object receives directly the action of the subject means the direct the direct object receives receives means accepts the direct ob object accepts the action of the subject directly it means that the subject makes action on the direct object directly means without not indirectly direct the subject makes the action on uh, action on the word on the object that is called the direct object for example mohan plays cricket mohan plays cricket in this sentence directly mohan makes action on cricket on bat on ground and that's why here this uh, cricket is the direct object because this mohan subject has made the action on this object or on this word directly so that is the direct object the direct object can be a noun direct object can be a noun uh, for example thomas wordsworth shakespeare ganesh these are the nouns and pronoun pronoun means what Uh, he, she, it, they. So suppose they are boys. They are boys. So they are boys. So this they is the pronoun. I am a man. I am a man. So I is the pronoun. So these are the pronouns. And pronouns are also the subjects. Nouns are also the subjects. The next. Uh, type of the object is indirect object so what is the indirect object listen carefully the indirect object tells that to whom to whom or for whom the action of the sentence is being done by the subject means for whom or to whom the action is being done by the subject in the sentence this is the quality of understanding the indirect object how we can understand the indirect object 
the subject cannot make the action directly on that object the 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 subject makes action on the object indirectly means to whom for whom uh, such type of words we can use there and this is called the indirect action means that uh, that uh, subject makes the indirect action on the object and that's why that object is called the indirect object for example we will see the man gives a beggar the man gives a beggar 5 rupees the man gives a beggar 5 rupees so how will be the explanation the man gives 5 rupees to whom to whom for whom for whom to whom he gives 5 rupees the answer comes to a beggar and that's why a beggar is there the indirect object next is the indirect object is always a noun or pronoun here we can say that this indirect object is also a noun or pronoun we know now uh, we can understand now what is the noun and pronoun so the indirect object is also the noun and pronoun the last point of this sentence element is complement 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 or supporting words we can call it for example mohan plays cricket on the ground mohan plays cricket on the ground in this sentence on the ground is the phrase and this phrase is called the complement this phrase is called the supporting words because these words are supporting the sentence supporting to the sentence these words are helping to the sentence and these words are complementing to the sentence and that's why these uh, uh, these words uh, or this phrase is also called the uh, complement or supporting words or additional words or extra words we can say next the complement helps the subject remember what is the explanation the complement helps the subject uh, again the complement helps the subject the complement renames the complement renames renames uh, how we will see the complement describes means three works or three duties or three activities are done by this complement which are the three activities the first is the complement helps the subject the complement renames and the complement describes the subject means the complement does three actions in in a sentence means the complement helps the subject the complement renames the subject and the complement describes the subject how we will see for example the man is a good father the example is the man is a good father now in this sentence a good father is a complement a good father is a complement how because father is a noun father is a noun and this father is the rename rename of the man who is who is father the man the man is a father means father is the man the man is the father so this father is renaming the man and that's why this is the complement and remember always the complement comes always with the to be verb to be verb means which are the to be verbs am is are was were these are the to be verbs and with these to be verbs always the complement comes suppose i am a professor she is a madam we are boys we were professors all these sentences show the complements means complements always come after to be verb that is the important point here and so the sentence is the man is a good father because you know, in this sentence the father word is telling us the noun 
or telling us about the noun or it is renaming means uh, father is the rename of the man and the man is the uh, man is the father so renaming and this is the subject also and eh? and it is describing the subject also all these qualities are there in the complement and that's why uh, these uh, complements are the last uh, uh, point of this uh, sentence element we have finished our today's topic uh, now again uh, i request uh, to all my students that these are the corona days and these corona days have uh, troubled or disturbed all the society all people uh, in the world and the life of man is at uh, at danger that's why uh, i request my students that they should uh, be uh, safety at homes and i hope my students will be there at homes they will not come out of the houses they will not go into the gatherings i hope so and i finish here my lecture uh, 13th Thank you thank you thank you very much